Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Retired Vet Show. Please like and subscribe as you come in so that you can get further content as I drop it and also help me out with the algorithm so that more people can view this video. This one has been brewing for a while, ever since I saw Matt Gates come to the floor of the house and present this evidence of what's going on in Niger, Africa. Uh, U.S. soldiers are being held behind enemy lines in Niger, Africa. On the screen, you see a military base that's co-located with the with a civilian uh, uh, airport, and this is where they were flying drones out in support of uh, ISIS attacks or ISIS uh, missions there in in Africa. There's a large presence of ISIS there, and they were using this air base as a uh, platform or as a starting point to launch attacks within Africa so they didn't have to fly across the country, around the world to get there to launch these attacks. They have a base right there in Niger, Africa. But the end result of all of this is that this uh, base is going to be turned back over to the uh, terrorists there in Niger, Africa. The very people that the United States military trained, and as soon as we trained them, they turned around and took over the government. And now they're trying to extort this military base. And these also these uh, terrorists are also uh, very sympathetic to the Russians. And as far as I can tell, reading the documents from the uh, documents that uh, Representative Matt Gates has, that the United States is going to turn this base over to these terrorists. But I'll let you listen to Representative Matt Gates tell you, tell it to you right off. This is the exact same speech I heard him say on the on the floor of the House of Representatives. So let me tee this up so you can hear Representative Matt Gates <clears throat> share when he first went to the House floor of his concerns about this base being turned over and the, and the depravity that is going on with our military service members there in Africa. I seek unanimous consent to enter into the congressional record, part two of the interim report that I uh, have prepared for the House of Representatives entitled Unwelcome in Niger, without objection. Mr. Speaker, I rise to warn this body of the deteriorating conditions in the African country of Niger and to give rise to the concern of service members and contractors. More than a thousand of them right now are functionally being held hostage in Niger. They are being used as pawns during a negotiation that has left America at the bended knee of third world criminals and thugs as our troops seek medicine and fresh water and troop rotations. How did we get here? with more than 1,100 Americans endangered right now in Niger. Well, it started back in March of 2023. Secretary of State Antony Blinken went to Niger and proclaimed that it was a model of resilience, a platform for great democracy. It would be where America would execute its Africa strategy. One year later, almost to the day, there was a coup in Niger. And guess who overthrew the government that we said was the great model of resilience? People we trained, we trained the coup leaders to go throw out the democratically elected government of Niger. And I know this will surprise you, but after that occurs, they say they want our bases that U.S. taxpayers have poured more than a billion dollars into gone. They want our service members gone. And so I came to this floor after hearing from some of my constituents who were stationed in Niger. And after the overthrow of the government, there weren't resupply flights. They said, Congressman, we are going to be out of medicine in May if we don't get this sorted out. Three days after I filed part one of the report that I am supplementing today, the Biden administration announced that we will be leaving Niger. A welcome sign, I'm sure, but the leaving didn't actually happen. We have people who are now more than 200 days into a 180-day rotation. And while the negotiation regarding retrograde and withdrawal are ongoing, the government in Niger is using the well-being and health of our service members as leverage to get what they want out of our government. Our troops aren't getting medicine for malaria, for cholesterol, for their blood pressure, 
chronic conditions. And I have received the letters from the wives, from the fathers of the people who are in Niger now. And they say, we know that our family members are being extorted by the local governments when they try to leave hundreds of dollars to even bring a bag through the airport. We know that Russians are behind the wire. You know what a real U.S. president would do? Say that C-130s are on their way to Niger today with the water and the medicine and the food our troops need, that they will have a full fighter pilot escort there. And if the Niger government or any other third world thug tries to even turn on their air defense systems, we should show those leaders and those thugs what the target package looks like on their houses and their family members, because it should not be Americans that are suffering because President Biden and Blinken are so embarrassed that their strategy in Africa failed that they're willing to let Americans' conditions deteriorate. <clears throat> so he went on for a couple more minutes. He, was, he started bloviating after that. But if you've ever been deployed downrange, as I call it, downrange uh, in a um, in a foreign country, the military flies uh, your supplies into the local air base, or if you're on, if you're near a military base there, they'll fly the supplies in, and then they get distributed from that particular airfield out to where you where you're wherever you're located. And basically, they're not allowing the military flights to land on a civilian side so that they can get the supplies to the military people there. They're not able to get water, which I pro they probably get from the local uh, locals there. They're not able to get that. Or if they're flying it in, they're not able to get the flights in. So everything that they need, they're not able to get. Or when it comes time for their rotation to rotate out of Africa, there's no flight there, or even if they use a civilian airport, they're getting extorted to pay hundreds of dollars in order to get out of the country or to have something flown into the country. That's the travesty of it. And basically what the government was doing was hiding this, this whole fiasco and nobody was talking about it. And the only reason I'm talking about it is that Matt Gates went to the House floor <coughs> and actually brought it to everybody's attention. And then they did a hearing after this where they had the uh, the general and the civilian leader there, and they was looking like they had no clue of what was going on. And they basically said, well, we'll get back to you once we gather more information, which they should have already had the answers to those questions, being that they are the leadership, the civilian and military leadership that's in charge of this mission. But I'm going to link these 12 documents down in the description section of everything that he talked about and everything that has happened since these soldiers have been deployed in Niger. And it will give a, a, a more thorough picture of what's going on or what has been going on there with the soldiers that are behind enemy lines and the deteriorating factors that's going on in our government that has allowed this atrocity to happen. I call it an atrocity because military personnel shouldn't be stranded without supplies. That's why I call it atrocity. Our government should know what's going on. Our government should have intervened and a minimum gotten our soldiers out before it deteriorated. But they didn't. And here we are. Another, here's another situation, just like Afghanistan, where we're behind the eight ball, where we're going to give up over a hundred million dollar air base to terrorists. Just to get our soldiers out, if we can even get all of our soldiers out. And our contractors out. Of course, you got special forces there too, because they help train the the Niger the, the people in Niger, the military personnel there who in who there after they were trained took over the government. Oh my goodness. Again, so if you like the content, please hit the like button. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel for more content. Turn on your notifications. And I thank you for listening and watching the retired vet show. God bless you all. Stay safe.